Good evening, uh, welcome uh, Eric. We resume, uh, despite everything, uh, the Monday appointments uh, and uh, on behalf of Rafael Milano, I do the honors uh, welcoming Eric Kessels, uh, uh, one of our uh, columns uh, of the master degree in uh, photography. Our Monday uh, appointments uh, are, as you know well, uh, an uh, opportunity to bring uh, together representatives uh, coming from uh, different professional and cultural uh, fields, uh, uh, vocations and disciplines, uh, and for, for to all uh, our students. Uh, but in uh, this occasion, uh, the event is also open to uh, external participants uh, as will uh, happen in the uh, coming next week uh, with uh, other guests. I'm particularly pleased to introduce uh, Eric Kessels uh, tonight because he represents an uh, unusual and extraordinary uh, and curious profile uh, in, uh, in the creative world because he's an artist, uh, a designer, a publisher, and uh, deeply passionate uh, about uh, the world of uh, image. Since 1996, uh, uh, has been a creative director of uh, Kessel Kramer Agency based in Amsterdam, in London, and um, he received a uh, prestigious uh, prize uh, all over the world and uh, including the uh, Amsterdam Apply Prize uh, for Art. Uh, he has exhibited uh, to all over the world, uh, most recently in uh, New York at uh, Museum of Modern Art. Uh, thank you, Eric, uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Rafa Milano, of course, is proud to have you as uh, a member of uh, its uh, faculty. Welcome uh, to Milan in this uh, particular condition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good uh, Monday talk, uh, everyone. And uh, remember, stay at home. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, um, uh, and uh, good evening, everyone. I uh, like to dedicate this talk, uh, especially in this moment uh, where, um, you know, like, uh, uh, everything kind of has to make sense uh, at this time, uh, but uh, I like to dedicate this talk to uh, no sense and making uh, nonsense. And uh, because uh, I think that uh, especially in the uh, creative industry, um, yeah, like uh, there's a lot of people that always too much try to uh, make sense of uh, certain th things. And I think that sometimes uh, nonsense can be also something uh, very uh, interesting and uh, can be a nice uh, starting point for creativity. Especially in a lot of disciplines, uh, people yeah, really take themselves uh, serious. And I think sometimes to not do that and go into a different direction, it uh, can open up a lot of things for uh, creativity. So um, in my case, uh, let me just introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I started uh, my career also with a little bit of nonsense uh, because uh, my partner and I, we were working in uh, London in an uh, agency and uh, there was a lot of tension in the agency and uh, both of us uh, thought like maybe we should uh, rent a chicken suit and appear both of us uh, in a chicken suit at work and um, yeah, just to lighten it up a little bit and uh, uh, half of the agency really liked it, the other half was not amused, uh, as they say in uh, England. And uh, because it turned out later that uh, two weeks later uh, we got fired, I think, over uh, over this event by uh, popping up in a chicken suit at work. And uh, but this was also kind of the start of our career, uh, which was in some ways kind of a disappointment, but uh, it also fueled us to kind of start our own agency. So the next picture is uh, our first uh, agency uh, picture in uh, 1996, where we started in Amsterdam. Uh, we were in a way the first agency in Holland that was ever uh, kind of uh, set up with uh, two creatives and, and not with uh, uh, business people. Uh, uh, this is like, um, it's me on the left, if you don't uh, recognize me anymore. And um, yeah, so the, the company is called uh, Kessels Kramer. 
uh, as a graphic designer and the background uh, of a graphic designer, it's also very difficult sometimes to uh, kind of make your own logo. Um, and that was also for me the case, of course, but because um, that's a lot of pressure. But luckily there was this uh, um, a metal store around the corner that uh, were selling these uh, horseshoes with a horse in the middle. And uh, so we put, uh, we bought one, we put our name on it. And up till now, it's still our uh, logo. And uh, so sometimes that uh, can help uh, to just uh, uh, find something else. Uh, we uh, work in a uh, church in Amsterdam. Uh, this is, uh, has uh, many advantages, of course. Uh, in Holland, for instance, uh, there's a lot of abandoned churches because people don't go to church anymore. And um, um, so it's a perfect uh, big open space to work in. And um, yeah, also for your parents, it's quite nice because you can tell them that you go to church every day. And uh, apart from the weekends then, so not on Sunday, uh, but it's one uh, like open space where everybody uh, creates their own space and, and uh, works in there. Um, I think, uh, yeah, as I said before already, uh, maybe not everything that you make have to, has to make sense. I mean, some things do, of course, but uh, it's quite nice that you also sometimes produce things that uh, don't make sense. Um, let me show some uh, works that we did from the beginning. This is uh, we worked for six years for uh, diesel. Uh, this is an example where we. Um, produced this work uh, called Save Yourself because a lot of um, yeah, young people want to stay younger and younger constantly. So we made this work saying, uh, giving tips to people how to stay younger. And uh, so in this case, by drinking urine, that could help. Uh, um, another uh, very um, yeah, simple ad in a way for uh, Vitra, it's like a furniture furniture company. It's saying like the Eames aluminium chair guaranteed to stay in the family. Quite a classic ad, but also here it's quite nice with a serious company like Vitra to kind of play a little bit uh, uh, on the humor. Um, another uh, uh, work we did, we work already 12 years for them. It's, it's an organization called Women Inc. And this is a female organization run by women. Uh, that uh, campaign on female topics. So in this case, for instance, it turns out that women in their working life uh, earn 300,000 euro less than men in their whole working life. And uh, this campaign is about women looking for their missing 300,000 uh, euro. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, <clears throat> it's also now good to say that for instance, I work in design and advertising and uh, for instance, also uh, advertising is yeah, something I really uh, hate uh, most of the times because a lot of uh, things you see are uh, totally appalling and, and really stereotypical. And uh, in a way, this is also quite good to hate advertising, I think, because that for me, it's a motivation to really um, yeah, make something different and uh, try to uh, do things in a different way because this is almost uh, easy because everyone is doing almost the same, you know, like uh, uh, so for instance, next I'll show you a uh, ad for uh, a TV commercial for a radio station and uh, this was during the World Cup of Soccer. So also here you see that a lot of brands, they use exactly the same metaphors to um, to play with, but so it's quite easy to change that. And uh, so this was for a radio station uh, during the World Cup of uh, soccer. Yeah, so the, the animal rights organization was not very happy with us after this uh, film because they really mailed us and called us uh, and they told us like, listen, you have to make another uh, TV commercial 
to show that the dog is still alive. Because, um, yeah, like, uh, you can't do this. This is animal torture. And uh, so for us, this was really uh, good because you just have to tell us to uh, that we really have to do something. And then we also do that, of course. So the next uh, film is a... Um, uh, was the, the next event uh, for uh, this Radio 1 uh, was uh, Tour de France. So the, the, the next film is... Uh, uh, we made during this Tour de France event where we where the dog appeared again in the commercial <clears throat> and even the owner was back into the commercial. Yeah, so after this film, we never heard back from them anymore, from the animal rights organization. It was like uh, literally a uh, radio silence. So that uh, shows also how to sometimes uh, do this. Um, this is uh, more a identity job, like a brand identity for a museum called NOA Forum in Dusseldorf. And also here uh, you, yeah, it's quite nice to, because a lot of musea, they often um, yeah, have a very static identity, and uh, which is kind of strange because in the museum itself, uh, a lot of things change constantly. So what we did, we made an identity that in a way online and also offline is constantly uh, changing and is never the same. So this works on an algorithm and it's constantly making a new uh, identity out of it. Uh, also in the museum itself, uh, there is... Um, uh, like uh, people have these uh, white sweaters on and uh, there's all these uh, functions on there. Uh, the only thing is that uh, they are totally mixed up. So uh, the director has the security shirt, the security has the uh, exhibition designer shirt, the shop manager wears uh, the shirt of the curator. So you never know who is who. Also, you have these kind of uh, classical benches in musea, museums where people have to sit on. So this one is in German, but it's has like normal, different, better. So you can decide yourself where to sit on. There's another one uh, saying father, mother, child, animal friend. So you also here you can decide where you want to sit. Um, this one uh, is just a sign which is pointing into a corner and it says like corner. So this is uh, means Ecke means uh, in English it means corner. So. You know, it's quite nice in the museum that you uh, say like uh, that you point into a corner and say like, uh, OK, this is a corner. Um, this is like the locker area. So here it says like a mini bar on the bottom here. It says like schlechter Laune, which means uh, bad mood. So you can also uh, lock up uh, your bad mood. Um, this is the wardrobe. It says bitte kein the hosen, which means please no trousers. So you have to keep your trousers on while you visit the museum. Uh, this is like a random masterpiece, which is in a corner. Um, then there is these uh, buckets for umbrellas at the entrance. It says like donations and umbrellas. So you, yeah, you can decide where to put your umbrella in. Um, yeah, this is a simple one, room for rent, which is a a room that has uh, not been taken yet. Uh, this is the uh, alarm system, so it flickers constantly. It's called Disco. Uh, this is the general uh, signage it's saying uh, exhibition, childhood, Rome, uh, find your own way. So it's like really, uh, there's mul multiple uh, purposes. Uh, please no to toasters, you have to leave them home. Uh, this is like the highest point in the museum. It says God. And uh, this is the toilet. So it's uh, for free. Yeah, then uh, uh, a job we do for uh, a uh, museum, for a, a hotel, which is called Citizen M. Uh, here we did uh, the name, the identity, and uh, everything in and around uh, the hotel. Uh, we came up with the name uh, Citizen M because it uh, is based on uh, mobile citizens. 
So uh, this is a hotel which is made out of shipping container modules. So uh, when they have a new premises, they can uh, yeah, put this uh, hotel within two months uh, together. So all the, the hotel rooms are prefabricated and uh, yeah, they will be located to the space and then they can put them on top of each other and uh, make the hotel. And the hotel is a, a mix between budget and luxury. They call it affordable luxury. So you, there's no, not a lot of personnel. You have to check in yourself uh, upon entrance, upon arrival. And um, we did all these kind of mobile citizens, like an army of mobile citizens that you find within uh, the uh, hotel. And um, yeah, also we kind of, uh, did in a way everything, um, every moment that we could communicate with people, we did that. And uh, so this is a Citizen AM, Citizen PM, the soap. Uh, this is a soap saying designed to turn even the longest haul traveler into a sparkling, clean and nice smelling human being again. Um, the advertising says, uh, choose a hotel that's 400 meters from here and a million miles from the Hilton. Uh, this is like uh, when they opened in uh, New York on Times Square. Um, it says, Citizen M says, luxury is free Wi-Fi and extra large baths, not a stupidly long car. And uh, this is in front of the Hilton Hotel, where we had this, uh, for a photo opportunity, this uh, guy walking around with his uh, trolley saying, 24-hour uh, bar and free Wi-Fi beats a guy in a silly hat carrying your bags. The uh, next is a film also to show that Citizen M has really enough of all the hotel cliches. Yeah, um, let me go to the next one. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, 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 another uh, project I like to show. It's, um, it's something I did together with a friend of mine, uh, Thomas Mylander. This is uh, uh, an exhibition, an idea for an, uh, for an event, an exhibition. It's called Photo Pleasure, uh, Photo Pleasure Palace, and it's during a festival in Amsterdam. Uh, we uh, uh, had the idea to create like this uh, kind of uh, fun fair within a festival. And um, um, yeah, for instance, one of the attractions was called Jump Trump. Uh, so this is like a, uh, a stage where you can climb on and then from a certain distance, you can jump into this cushion of eight by eight meters and then really uh, jump in his face and uh, jump on Trump and uh, really trash his face and uh, and uh, about uh, 20,000 people did this uh, over four days time. So it's also this, it's, you know, sometimes when you have the uh, opportunity to uh, react on something political, uh, I think as a designer or a visual artist, you, 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 you need to do that uh, wherever you can. So that's, uh, this is, I think, an example of, uh, of that. Um, yeah, then <clears throat> I think also within Creativity, I mean, that's sometimes a bit, a bit of a mis misunderstanding, but I think that uh, confusion is actually a very good thing. You know, like uh, uh, a lot of uh, clients will say like, uh, yeah, why would you confuse uh, consumers or why would you confuse people? But uh, I think one of the uh, great um, um, uh, yeah, ways to, uh, to, to show something creative is to confuse people, is to show them something that they haven't seen before. And uh, because this is also creativity, to be different and to uh, do something different. Uh, um, maybe one example, uh, we, uh, this is a very small job, but we did that for a school in, uh, in Holland. And 
we did a lot of we did their identity and a lot of other things, but they also asked us to come up with an idea to solve the problem that on their uh, campus, because they have like maybe 15,000 people are in that school, uh, students, and uh, the uh, on the campus they had a lot of trouble with uh, the garbage there. People w didn't want to throw away the garbage in the garbage bin. So this was a problem and Sometimes the solution is not to solve the problem, but to make the problem even worse. So, uh, or to make it even stronger, the problem. And uh, this is a good example for that because on the garbage bin, it says like throwing away garbage in the garbage bin. How difficult can that be? And then we made that very difficult. You know, so these are permanent installations on the campus of the school. And you see that, um, yeah, we made it deliberately difficult for uh, students to throw away their garbage and uh, so here there's also like a garbage bin with a heavy weight on it so you really have to lift this with three people uh, to be able to throw away uh, your garbage and uh, this one as well like a ladder with a you know like it takes quite some time and it's quite a challenge to throw away your garbage and this is, uh, yeah, it solved immediately the problem because the students really love this kind of challenge. They made a lot of images with it, films with it that they posted online. And uh, yeah, like uh, immediately we kind of touched uh, upon their kind of humor and uh, not pointing with the finger and saying like, you can't do this and you have to do this. Another example we did for Greenpeace, uh, this was during the, um, Christmas uh, uh, time where people give each other gifts, but in a way people don't know what to give each other anymore. So and this plays a little bit on this because it's a product that we did for Greenpeace and it's called, it's a, on the top of this box, it says like, uh, hooray, you have received nothing. So in the, when you open up the box, it says like you have, you have received nothing. So there's a, just a card in there which says nothing and, um, yeah, this is just a way to uh, give a donation to uh, someone and uh, as a gift. Uh, and um, also we did, uh, we made shops uh, called Nothing uh, by Greenpeace. And in the shop it said like uh, buy nothing. Uh, and there's three models of nothing. There's uh, the smaller version, which is uh, called uh, almost nothing. And then uh, the, the medium one is called nothing and the big one is called really nothing. And um, so in this way, it, uh, uh, yeah, you can also play with this confusion and, uh, uh, and this is really working very well for them. Uh, always in the, in the, in the period uh, that people give each other at the end, give each other things at the end of the year. Um, yeah, this is another chapter quite uh, uh, important, I think. Um, <clears throat> I really like to advocate that uh, uh, people uh, should really uh, not brainstorm so often because, uh, yeah, I think uh, you should never uh, brainstorm. I mean, when you, uh, you know, you can uh, discuss your idea with someone else or you can kind of ping pong with someone else to uh, maybe uh, try out your ideas. But, uh, you know, everybody knows that when you have a room full of people um, and uh, there's six, seven people in a room and you have a brainstorm, so-called, and everybody has to come up with an idea, you know as well as I know that there's always one person always having the word, He's always, he or she is always talking, and, uh, and there's some other ones who never say something, they're only looking in their uh, notepad and they're writing down things. So in a way, um, yeah, it's just a room full of people masturbating on top of each other. But at the end, it just turns out to be a big mess and uh, nothing comes out of it. And uh, I think it's much better when you lock yourself up, you come up with some ideas, first ideas, and then uh, show them to someone, talk to someone about it, maybe make it better or somebody else can help you with it but do it in a big group uh, hardly ever works. Um, yeah, then uh, uh, this is maybe a, quite a nice example of uh, not having a brainstorm. Um, this is like the theme for the city of Amsterdam, I Amsterdam, and uh, we, uh, 
as an agency got invited to uh, uh, to do this pitch for the city of Amsterdam and uh, for the theme. And uh, there were five design agencies invited to come up with this. And uh, the, we, we just went uh, with our bikes to uh, the uh, city hall to get briefed. And uh, yeah, like uh, after receiving the brief, we which was all about to come up with an identity for a city and to make a brand into the city and blah, blah, blah. So on the way back uh, on our bike, uh, which took five minutes back to the office, we already had this idea, uh, I Amsterdam. Um, so because it, it was almost, almost like floating in the air and uh, we thought uh, this could be maybe a, a solution, but it, it felt so easy and so obvious that we thought like, uh, maybe it's uh, good to check if this is already existing and if it's, uh, um, yeah, like uh, not already uh, there. So we, we we did this, we checked it and it was not existing. We, on the same day, we registered it ourselves, which uh, was quite an investment, but we thought like, wow, if this doesn't exist, we really should own it ourselves now before even presenting it. Uh, two weeks later, we presented this idea. Um, after doing the presentation, funny enough, it was deadly silent in the room. And uh, I uh, asked the woman next to me, uh, I asked her, like, is something wrong? And then she said, like, yeah, it's very embarrassing for you because the people that just presented before you had exactly the same idea. So it turned out that from the five design agencies, five of uh, three of them had uh, uh, I Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, really uh, bizarre. I said like, yeah, we we also. I said to the people in the in the in the room, yeah, we also had this idea quite quickly, to be honest. But yeah, to be honest, uh, it's uh, the idea is ours. We own it because we registered it, and uh, and they really didn't like that from the beginning. Uh, they were almost a bit pissed off uh, because they thought we were too forward on this. But in the end, they uh, researched it and. Uh, and it went out, it turned out very well. And so in the end, they had to go with us. So this shows also that sometimes as a designer or, as a, you know, when you have an idea and you think like, listen, this is unique, maybe you should also claim it before you even present it. Nowadays, I kind of uh, collect all these ripoffs that people made. So this one is Wow Moscow, uh, only Lyon. And recently I found We Are Ramallah. So there's a lot of uh, copies of this. Sadly enough, we didn't register these names or these combinations, but uh, yeah, it's just a nice example of something that um, intuitively uh, we came to this idea and uh, yeah, without a brainstorm, but we we kind of claimed it ourselves. <clears throat> yeah, then uh, uh, it's quite uh, nice also here Sometimes when everybody points in one direction, it's sometimes quite good to be uh, to point in the other direction. So if everybody wants to be the best, uh, try to be the worst. Uh, this is a uh, quite a good example, I think, <clears throat> for a first uh, client we ever worked for. This this was a budget hotel in the center of Amsterdam. So they were the, actually the first ones that ever called us uh, when we were starting in Amsterdam. We still work for them uh, right now. Uh, and uh, I went there the next day and actually, um, you know, I was quite excited because this was our first uh, client. And actually, when I went there the next day, it was a total nightmare because it it it, it was a total shithole, this hotel. It looked like horrible and, you know, I, I was totally, uh, uh, yeah, kind of... Uh, uh, frustrated about it, especially as our, being our far first client. But then, um, <clears throat> yeah, we didn't want to give up because the owner of the hotel was somebody very nice. And uh, so then we thought like maybe uh, we came up with this strategy uh, saying like maybe honesty is their only luxury they have. So we use this up till now. So always saying that honesty is their uh, uh, only luxury. From the beginning, we did these uh, posters in different European cities saying uh, now a bed in every room, which is very honest, uh, of course, which is true. Also, uh, now more rooms without a window. Uh, 
uh, now even more dog shit in the main entrance, which is quite uh, easy to find in Amsterdam. Um, also in the rooms themselves, there were these A3 cardboard cards that were actually on the bed. Here you see uh, how the bed looks like. Uh, so we designed these uh, cardboard cards. And when you had scissors on you, you could uh, cut them out and have all these kind of luxuries. And you could really pimp your room with all these luxuries. And actually, uh, when we started for the hotel, they had 60,000 overnights. But after working for them for one year and doing these campaigns for quite a low budget, uh, we made these campaigns. Uh, the hotel already went to 70 or 75,000 overnights. So the next year we did this really, um, um, yeah, like a very uh, expensive looking uh, campaign. So it has these very beautiful photographs in there. And it says like the Handbrinker Budget Hotel Amsterdam. And there's all these stars on this image. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but at the right hand bottom of this uh, poster, it says like uh, not included. <clears throat> so there's actually nothing that you find in this image is included in the in the hotel rooms at the Handbrinker Budget Hotel. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh, then uh, at a certain moment, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we thought like, uh, yeah, we, we can't make it any worse, this, this advertising for them. So we, we got kind of uh, blocked a little bit because, uh, yeah, we thought like, how can we go from here? And in a way, we used that uh, problem we had in our uh, ideas. Uh, for real. So we said like Hans Rink a budget hotel, it can't get any worse, uh, but we'll do our best. Yeah, so these were like smart solutions to show that the hotel uh, really did their best uh, to make it uh, a little bit more bearable. Also here, uh, the image on the right is a little bit more promising than the image on the left. Then another year, there were all these kind of uh, you, um, boutique and design hotels uh, starting around this air in this area of the Hansbrinker Budget Hotel. So we thought like, uh, yeah, let, let's have a look uh, what kind of design we have in our uh, in our hotel. And in a way, we also have very uh, unique uh, design. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, for this hotel, uh, for the first time in about 15 years for working for them, we actually found out that the hotel had also something very positive to offer because we found out that the hotel was accidentally eco-friendly because uh, the hotel had like an eco towel in the room and there was, which was of course the curtain, but there was also an eco elevator. There was an eco shower in the, in the room. And uh, sometimes these ideas, they just uh, pop up, uh, you know, they are already literally on the street. So this idea uh, came from the fact that this hotel had like for many, many years, this huge hotel sign in front of the door, but then only the L was burning for many years uh, of the hotel. So this in a way came to this idea of uh, accidentally eco-friendly. So. On this kind of pamphlet, it says also uh, on top of this picture, it has this eco fact saying our hotel sign uses only 20% of the energy of normal hotel signs. So in the end, now we still work for them. The uh, At the moment, uh, they haven't changed anything to the hotel. It still looks pretty uh, rough and uh, 
but uh, at the moment they have more than 160,000 overnights. Maybe not right now, but uh, um, yeah, like uh, so this increased enormously. And uh, funny enough, like uh, the hotel even now gets quite a lot of complaints because uh, people now nowadays uh, they complain go there because they thought uh, after going there that it was not bad enough. They really went there almost like a pilgrimage to visit the worst hotel in the world. Um, yeah, then uh, I think it's also um, uh, beauties in the imperfection because my, uh, maybe you see that already a little bit in the work, but my fascination is really uh, in imperfections uh, because you see also in design, advertising, photography, a lot of these applied arts, they, they uh, um, yeah, like the tools we use are very perfect, you know, like computers make no mistakes, the cameras on our phones, uh, they are better than ever. So perfection is not really a fantastic starting point for uh, new creativity. And uh, so I, I did this book uh, called Failed It. It's, it's uh, translated in a lot of countries. And um, uh, in the book, uh, I really um, promote uh, for creative people to deliberately fuck up and to deliberately go into a wrong direction and make mistakes. And uh, this is, uh, I think, very important, you know, like uh, to, um, yeah, really uh, uh, take a wrong side street where the navigation tells you, system tells you not to go there and, and the woman uh, on, the, on the machine tells you to turn around and turn around. And, um, but this is a very good way to go, you know, you should go on if you are in a wrong direction. And then uh, eventually you end up somewhere good and somewhere uh, new where nobody has visited yet, metaphorically. So in this book, uh, I also have a lot of images that uh, inspire me because often uh, while walking on the street or looking online, I found these images uh, of uh, things that look really beautiful and it's like kind of nice architecture but at a certain moment you think like hey wait a minute there's something wrong here and you see this outdoor also indoor in the kitchens you know there's also something strange here also you have these uh, like gigantic fuck ups because uh, this is like uh, someone here had to post this billboard but there was a 50 50 percent chance that it was right but still they fucked it up but I think that a billboard like this has more, um, you know, viewers than when it would be posted the wrong, the right way around. Also here, yeah, you you tell me what's wrong here. I mean, how can you do this? Uh, there's a bike path here. Um, you know, here they promote really people. Uh, you see it here to park and uh, more parking lots. This one is also a bit of a disgrace, of course put the security camera behind the monitor. And uh, the next one is also one of my nicest ones that I found is a, um, you know, like if you have children, some people really find this taboo, but sometimes sometimes you really hate your children because especially when they're small, they can be really a pain in the ass sometimes. So um, this next designer who came up with this playground tool really found uh, a nice, uh, solution for when you hate your children because you put them in here and thus you give a, 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 a nice swing and then uh, this uh, works very well. You see also that people have used this already so there's a lot of cracks here so um, it uh, does its work. This is in a graveyard in Amsterdam. It's bizarre you know they put like a garbage bin next to a grave and it almost is visually similar to a grave. Uh, so I don't know how this works. Uh, is this like an eco funeral or something? You bring your beloved ones and then you throw them down the uh, garbage bin. Um, here, you know, like there's a clear sign how to uh, write this, but still it's not working. Yeah, there's the balcony without the window. Uh, then there's toilets, I mean, especially uh, disabled toilets. It's already very bad that you're disabled, but, uh, you know, many disabled toilets, they really block them because they think they will be never used. And they don't want anybody to go in there. 
But then normal toilets, they want as many people as possible in there. You know, there's hardly any privacy anymore. I mean, uh, how can you design this? I mean, there, there's a, yeah. Also here, there's another uh, disabled toilet. You know, when you're slightly disabled, so you should not go to this toilet because there's a huge uh, distance between the toilet and the handlebar. So uh, I don't know how this works. Uh, the, here you see a smart solution to open and close the door. Uh, this one looks like nothing is wrong here, but if you look closely and it's still very clean in this toilet, soon it will be a gigantic mess in this toilet. Uh, and this one is really one of my favorite ones. Also here, quite an ecological design. You can uh, take a piss, wash your hands, wash your dick, you know, you do all in one. There's a little towel to clean everything off. And, uh, you know, like a, a very beautiful design, I think. Not really, but you can, you know, you can look at it like that. Yeah, then uh, 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 this part uh, of the presentation is pretty shit. I think uh, this is a, a book I recently made called Shit. And uh, believe it or not, uh, once looking at eBay, uh, German eBay. I don't know why I was at German eBay, but uh, um, suddenly I found uh, this image uh, of a German Nazi taking a shit. Uh, believe it or not, there was a, ger a picture of a German soldier in the Second World War uh, taking a shit. And the, and the original picture was for sale. Uh, I mean, I was just uh, blown away that, that uh, I mean, uh, that people during this wartime uh, even were taking pictures of each other and even while taking a shit. So I, I started to look more and more for these images uh, online on German eBay and I found in maybe three or four months uh, time I found about uh, 80 of them. All soldiers, all Second World War German soldiers taking a shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, like often here there's seven of them taking a shit at the same time. Uh, yeah, quite bizarre, you know, like underneath uh, train station, uh, train wagons. And uh, yeah, quite obscene, but on the other hand also, yeah, it kind of humanizes them, but it questions a lot of things and um, so I did in the uh, first exhibition I did with this project was in Bolzano in Italy, which is also pretty German in a way. I think Italians say that Bolzano is not really Italy. And uh, but uh, so in, in a museum there, I did this uh, cabin of three by three meters, but there was like a double door to enter the cabin. So you could go in there. Uh, you would uh, get into this tunnel, close the first door, you have to open the second door, and then suddenly you are into a very classical white cube with all the uh, images uh, beautifully uh, framed and printed in there. But then when you were in there, you suddenly found out why there was the double door, because there was a gigantic smell inside, and it, uh, you would only last for four or five seconds in there, and then uh, you had to really run out and leave the exhibition. So, yeah, also in this case, I try to, yeah, also how I uh, present the project like this, I, yeah, I try to uh, add a different uh, dimension to it. In this case, a different sense. Then uh, another project which uh, <clears throat> fascinates me uh, that you know, nowadays you find so much, so much repetition and uniformity online on people that uh, take images and uh, they use the same memes, they take the same pictures. And in a way, this is very boring. But on the other hand, this can be also very inspiring. I mean, uh, it can be very inspiring to uh, look at this and uh, in this case, I did this project called uh, Group Show. It's a personal work also where um, very unnecessary work, I would say, but that is sometimes also very interesting when you, uh, I think uh, when you do this, do your personal projects, 
I mean, apart from people that do reportage photography or a journalist or whatever, but as an artist, sometimes it's quite nice to come up with something that is quite irrelevant or not very uh, necessary. So in this case, uh, I collected a lot of these vinyls uh, that you would find in these secondhand shops, so very cheap vinyls, sometimes 50 cents or one euro, nobody wants these. And these are vinyls of uh, group, with group pictures on there, uh, big children's choirs, uh, big uh, male choirs. Here you see like a, a image of uh, this vinyl saying children of one father, quite unbelievable, <laughs> especially in this time. Uh, and uh, God loves all children. Uh, so you see all these vinyls with uh, children choirs. Uh, you know, I found them all over uh, Europe. And in the end, I collected uh, um, like uh, 2000 of them. And I made it into a project where I made a new vinyl. So in the record is a sleeve with, uh, with a booklet with all the vinyls on there. And on this new vinyl, there's a collection of all the uh, records that I recorded again and then put them all on top of each other. So slowly, it starts quite slowly and at the end it becomes like a pandemonic, yeah, like terrible sound, but in a way quite uh, uh, interesting. Also in this clutter of images and sound we kind of live in. So here there's the exhibition in, uh, this was uh, in a festival in Switzerland. Uh, so there's a wall of 15 meters long and I show all these 2000 uh, vinyls with the real record covers with the vinyls in there. And actually it's a insulation with uh, sound. So this is in a church also and the sound, uh, yeah, sounds quite spe spectacular in there. So I have this, this is just something I did uh, uh, with my own phone. So I recorded it and this is like the sound in the insulation at the highest moment. So don't be scared, but it sounds like this. Yeah, so this is quite uh, an example of uh, nonsense that is there. Uh, um, then I, I like to uh, finalize with the last uh, chapter and that is uh, that I think that same like uh, imperfections, I think that a lot of professionals can learn quite a lot from amateurs. I mean, you can do this in, in whatever way you like, but uh, uh, I think that amateurs are a uh, big source of inspiration also because they you know, they, they are not afraid to take mistakes. They are sometimes very uh, focused on what they do and they go blindly for their fascinations. And this is uh, something very uh, interesting, I think. Uh, myself, I, I uh, yeah, make works with uh, images that I find or that are online and uh, also made by amateurs. And I made sometimes books and installations out of it. And I just give you some examples of it. This is an exhibition called uh, 24 Hours of Photos. So what I did, I downloaded 24 hours of photos that were uploaded in this period of time on Flickr. Flickr is this photo sharing uh, website. And uh, in total, these were 950,000 images that were uh, made in, uh, yeah, that were uploaded in 24 hours time. And uh, in the end, all 950,000 images were uh, uh, printed out and dumped into a museum where people could really walk through uh, the images, lie in them, uh, look at them, uh, edit them, pick them out. And uh, yeah, so this shows also what kind of flood of images we live with. Uh, of course, this is not a representation of all the images uh, being uh, uploaded online daily, but this gives a uh, yeah, a, a nice uh, representation of this. This is in a church uh, in Switzerland where the same uh, installation is shown. And uh, yeah, so I am very interested also in uh, uh, how people uh, post images online, how they uh, work with uh, different images. So for instance, also 
this whole selfie behavior is highly uh, interesting. And uh, uh, recently, uh, I, with a group of friends, we made this magazine called Useful Photography. And uh, we did we do uh, one issue every uh, year. And uh, in there are all only images that are made, uh, some I, sometimes semi-professional or amateurs that are made uh, for a certain purpose. So in this case, we found out that uh, men take also a lot of selfies, but they do that often uh, by taking a selfie of their genitals with something next to it, you know, and they call these uh, dick pics uh, because uh, these are made to share online on social platforms and on uh, Tinder and Grindr to show like the size of their uh, of their penis. And uh, so it's bizarre that there are so many images circulating online for everybody to look at. Uh, and uh, in total, we found uh, 8000 of them. And um, so uh, we, we edited the magazine with about 2000 of these images. But there are so many of them that you can almost edit them, uh, you know, almost like the day in the life of Dick. So that uh, it's almost like from the morning till the evening, what kind of things are being put next to uh, this, uh, your, you know, uh, next to your really. Uh, so in a way, um, uh, this is the cover of the magazine. So um, this is in the morning, 638. This was the first picture we found. So there's the alarm clock. And then uh, the magazine, uh, I don't show all the pages, but I show you some pages and it's quite a lot to take in. But uh, the, the, the magazine starts with in the morning because uh, there's uh, like the shampoo bottle because you have to take a shower. Uh, and uh, so can you believe this? I mean, there's so many images anonymously online of men uploading this, uh, you know, and not and, and knowing that it will cir circulate uh, online. So. After taking a shower, you uh, have to shave yourself. You have to uh, use some deodorant. You comb your hair because uh, soon you have to uh, have breakfast. You see all these uh, interesting uh, ways to uh, enjoy breakfast. And uh, after breakfast, uh, yeah, there's uh, the, uh, um, you know, you have to brush your teeth. So there's a lot of different uh, brands. After this, is you have to leave the door, you know, like because you have to go to work. Uh, you know, can you believe it? There are 18 pictures of a dick leaving the door just posted online. I mean, who who would ever think about that? Then you go into your car. You have to go to work. You put a CD on at work. Some people still work at a PC. Other ones work at Mac. Then there's the lunch, which is very uh, classical one. There's the hot dog. After lunch, you have a little bit of a break. You uh, have to spend some work in the afternoon, uh, write some things down because soon you also have to come up with what you do for uh, for dinner. So you have to go to the shop, spend some money to buy to to make uh, dinner. Uh, here, there's uh, 18 images of a coin, uh, one coin, two coins, three coins, and it goes on and on like that until like 28 coins on a dick balancing. Can you believe this? And also here uh, you have a snack after that, a drink. You have to go to the toilet. If you're happy, there's toilet paper. If not, there's none anymore, but then it can uh, really be useful as an ego booster and an extension. Uh, then there's the dinner, quite classical, the cucumber, after dinner entertainment, um, you know, the guitar, the bongo, uh, the piano. After dinner entertainment, you have to watch some television it's towards the end of the night. The remote control is a very useful item, very often used also. Here you see, you know, the sky remote control, uh, beer cans. You know, now we're entering the end of the day. You want some privacy. Some people have sex, use a condom. Uh, other ones need some more help uh, and need some liquids. And here you see towards the end uh, that it's already bedtime. And uh, yeah, it ends quite sad because you go to bed. The teddy bear is uh, kind of in, in bed. And uh, and this is also the end of the of the book then, uh, last page of the of the magazine. Uh, but it shows also like, I mean, this is quite a strange uh, and uh, uh, excessive example. 
but um, and the funny thing is also for instance this magazine always when we make the magazine we do uh, you send uh, press out to a PR out to certain weblogs online and um, but nobody ever uh, I mean the magazine is for a long time already sold out uh, because it was very popular but uh, nobody published these images or the magazine online because uh, it's funny that you take things from the internet, you do something with it, you organize it neatly, and then suddenly when you want to post it back online again, nobody wants it anymore. So that's also how this works. <laughs> so uh, to finalize uh, tonight, um, <clears throat> I uh, like to show like two more books. I, I make these uh, book series, which is called uh, In Almost Every Picture. Funny enough, I made now 15 of these books and every book has exactly the same title. Uh, the first book I made in 2001, the last one I made just a few months ago. Um, and uh, but they all have the same title and uh, I couldn't find a better one. So but it's quite uh, it's not very uh, smart. But uh, anyway, uh, in these books, there are um, only images that I find either online or I receive them uh, by people that uh, donate me a set of images or I found them on flea markets. And I only uh, find these images of uh, collections of images where I really uh, made by amateurs, where amateurs without them even knowing they have created a beautiful story out of something. I won't show, I can't show all of them, but uh, uh, there's in every book there's a very weird and uh, fascinating new story. Uh, I show two of my uh, <clears throat> favorite ones. One of them uh, is about uh, a family that made a family album, took a lot of pictures uh, of their dog, but they are fighting against one of the biggest mysteries in photography, and that's how to shoot my black dog. And this family totally fucked that up. You know they. Uh, photographed the dog for uh, 12 years and constantly it was a big failure. You know, they really uh, missed it and they really, even in outdoors, they took uh, a lot of images and uh, and they, they didn't get it right. Um, yeah, they also had decided to, to buy a black sofa, which really doesn't help. Uh, even outdoor, they you know, decided to position the dog in front of a shadow, so that also doesn't really work. But uh, uh, yeah, this shows like this long time frustration that they had to picture the dog in the right way. And uh, until they found a way to maybe do it, so they were fiddling a little bit with their camera and they really uh, found a way to overexpose the camera and then finally, yes, they this you know finally there was something uh, a picture. Finally, there was a picture where you could really see the the character of this dog. Yeah, the whole picture was of course overexposed, but it bleached out uh, the dog, and and here you could see his face. So this I, I really like uh, to edit these books and 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 tell the story almost as a visual book. So the the, the books are novel size and they are. Uh, there's no text in it, only a little text at the end of the book, but uh, you have to really find and, and, and read these images uh, by going through the book uh, yourself. Uh, the last one I show uh, is a, uh, uh, some uh, images I found online where uh, uh, this is a, a couple that is still alive and uh, they live in Florida and uh, the woman on the picture is called Valerie and her husband is called Fred and Fred really likes to take pictures of Valerie in the water and uh, I mean that's not so strange uh, but uh, he photographed her always in the water and uh, so this is the one of the first pictures he took this was in the 80s Valerie is still having her bathing suit on but soon after that she had to also keep her clothing on and uh, here you see that uh, uh, the clothing is also getting a little bit wet and they also, you know, they, they, they look at all kinds of different locations. Fred also goes sometimes into the water and takes pictures of Valerie in the water and almost like halfway in the water. And, uh, and uh, so obviously this is their fetish, of course, and, uh, and they call this also their own 
wet clothes adventure and they do this every day. This is like their hobby and they 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 really love this and they think like if you go with uh, with a bathing suit under your clothes and you go somewhere and, and go in your bathing suit, it's a it's a way of cheating for them. It doesn't really work. And uh, so they, they, they do it everywhere, even secretly in a public fountain. At the end of the day, uh, Fred uses the flash. And, uh, and also uh, uh, when it rains for them, it's fantastic. Uh, the more rain, the better. You know, they really are uh, fascinated about this. In the garden, uh, they, they live in a, in a town, in a small town in Florida called Clearwater. Can you believe it? They live in a town called Clearwater. And, uh, and they also have a lake in front of the house. This is also a beautiful picture, I think. Uh, I think a lot of photographers would really uh, be jealous uh, about this picture because it's, it's confusing, it's bizarre, it's, uh, it's very uh, cosmetic and very, uh, uh, yeah, quite beautiful. Uh, they have a, uh, a pool, of course, a swimming pool in their garden. They use it in the summers, in the winters. And uh, also Valerie, nowadays she has, you know, she takes everything in the water, her purse, the jewelry, the makeup, you know, like, uh, and, and look at this picture. It's almost a modern version of Ophelia. I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, this is one of the, my most favorite pictures. I mean, I have a lot of them, but I really like this picture because it's disturbing. It's, it's uh, very uh, beautiful. It touches you. And uh, and it's it's contemporary also. Uh, then I, I asked them to make the book, <clears throat> so I contacted them, and um, Fred and Valerie were very into that because they 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 love this kind of exposure because the more people see their images, the better. And um, yeah, so what I, I made the first hundred copies of the book on plastic paper, and uh, I uh, I thought like. This was my dream to send like the first uh, copies of the book to Fred and uh, Valerie and so that Fred could take pictures about with Valerie and, the, and, and Valerie reading the book into the water, in the water. And uh, so this would be the full circle for me and uh, would be uh, the finish, uh, finish of the project almost. And Fred and Valerie were really into that. So they said like send us the picture, the books and we will do that. So Fred sent me this. The, the only thing by the way, that I forgot to tell them, which is pretty stupid, that uh, I forgot to tell them that the book was waterproof. Uh, and then, uh, but then uh, I thought they, they will probably find out themselves. But uh, then uh, Fred uh, and Valerie sent me this email. They said like, uh, hello, Eric, I've sent a dozen of photos from our afternoon book swim. I hope they meet what is needed for publicity photos. I have Photoshop touched them up for good presentations. I shot well over 100 views and these are the best. The shoot went well. We were both in the mood. Of course, they were in the mood. There was a light overcast as hoped for with no harsh shadows. Valerie wanted to know if the book was really to go into the water. I said yes. The book slipped down into the water a little bit at a time, Valerie taking it and herself in deeper as the photos progressed. Eventually, it was fully under. She, we enjoyed the tantalizing intrigue of it. After the photo sequence, we both uh, swam with the book, looking again at each picture. The water was not seeming to have any effect on it. We must have enjoyed two hours in the, uh, in the water with it. So here, here comes the part that I forgot to tell them that the, bo the book was waterproof. So he said, like, I rinsed it off in the house, dried off each page, and place paper towels uh, between each page. And the book seems to have with uh, stood the lengthy adventure just fine. Love the whole business, Fred and Valerie. And these were the pictures. So uh, this is some pictures of uh, that Fred was taking and uh, they enjoy the book into the water. And this is my, my favorite one. So uh, yeah, like uh, really bathing with, uh, with uh, blessing the book almost in the water. And then I thought, OK, this uh, story is over now. But then uh, I got invited to exhibit their work in a festival. And uh, so this is in Switzerland also. It's in the Lake of Geneva. So I decided to have the photograph of uh, Valerie floating 10 by 15 meters uh, in this lake. Uh, Fred and Valerie, by the way, were also invited to uh, uh, 
yeah to to uh, come to the festival but uh, they didn't come because they, they couldn't come because they said we have another shoot going on so sorry about that uh, okay uh, but then Valerie was very much uh, around town so she was underneath bridges uh, there was even a fountain that I did with them so there was this bassin without uh, the water coming up so I decided to have their uh, water pictures on there and or their fountain pictures in there and then uh, I thought okay now it's finished but then recently and that brings me a little bit to the end of this talk uh, recently I found this image on the right uh, uh, I found it uh, online because this is a picture by a fashion company called Stella McCartney and uh, they made this uh, campaign with uh, taking only pictures of uh, their models uh, in, in the water and uh, copying exactly the cover of the book and some other pictures in the book and uh, I thought I'll send uh, these pictures to Fred and Valerie because they maybe have uh, some problems with it and uh, maybe they are not happy with uh, with this and um, but I was totally wrong of course and this is also where I like to end because I mean uh, amateurs I uh, think totally different and that's what what constantly and even daily surprises me and that's why I find so much inspiration in them sometimes um, so so Fred sent me this email after seeing these pictures together he said like we see the Stella photos uh, she does look a bit starched not enjoying the adventure so I mean uh, he was really uh, looking at her and uh, at her expression and he thought like, like why does she look so uh, bored and uh, so he said like sort of makes one wonder why she would be doing it to start with and in the end he said like I would hope she would get satisfaction in eventually taking the whole outfit under so thank you very much and thank you for uh, listening and uh, if you want to see more of the work uh, you can you can look on my Instagram or, or uh, some web pages and um, yeah I hope this is an inspiration in also I mean, I don't show all the work and I only show, of course, specific kinds of work, but uh, also <coughs> I like to advocate that, um, uh, yeah, like uh, sometimes it's quite nice to look away and to do things uh, that are, you know, totally uh, against uh, the rules or, I mean, this is a way also to find uh, new ways of uh, executing things, making ideas and, and uh, in the end uh, being happy. Thank you.